So now we have the Handy Hunter, which is, has come into operation in the last couple of years in our Sinisa classes. It is a very exciting class for a team of two competitors, not necessarily from the same school. Um, tack and turnout is not taken into consideration and neither is confirmation taken into consideration. And basically what it is, is we have five working riding obstacles and five working hunter obstacles. And this entire class is actually on time. Um, as I said previously, horses do not need to be plaited. So sometimes you will see horses coming in plaited, some of them will not be plaited. And it is not necessary for children to come completely turned out in show gear. So with blue jackets or with tweed jackets, they can come in in their school shirts or in um, perhaps in um, a different theme if they want to as well. So it, it is a great class and great excitement for, for all who actually share in it. What actually happens is they start off in a box and I think the box is usually around about seven meters by seven meters if I'm not mistaken. And as soon as the pony's front foot steps out of the box, the time actually starts. The class works on penalties as well, so there will be five penalties for um, a trotting pole that is moved or a lane pole that is moved. There will be five penalties for every jump that is knocked. There will be no penalties for if a child has to pick up a basket and trot a circle and the child drops the basket, there will be no penalty for that. But obviously the child will have to dismount and get back onto the pony again. And obviously there will be time constraints. Um, then the other thing is as well, which we need to be very clear, so, and a lot of children are very confused in this, is that when we start the working riding class, the, the child will come out of the box, the time will start. But perhaps there might be a pony that does not like going over a lane or like going through a lane with a mat in the lane. The child must make one attempt to go over that. If the child knows that the pony will not do it in the second attempt, let the child quickly go back into the box. The second child come out of the box when the first pony's four legs are back in the box again. Come and then do that element that the first child couldn't do and then go back into the box then for the first child to compete the other working riding obstacles. When the child has finished the working riding obstacles, will gallop back into the box again, right? And then the second child will then come out and then complete the working hunt around, will then go back into the box. And as soon as all four feet are back in the box, time stops. That is how it works. First team coming into the arena, they will go up to the judge to go and introduce themselves. And here you can see two girls. Um, they've got blue t-shirts uh, blue t t on, so not necessary for them to come into the arena with jackets on. It's quite interesting here because the judge as well as the scribe are both going to have to have eyes at the back of their heads to make sure that the second horse that is left in the box while the first one has actually gone out to go do the test does not step out of the box at all because this will also incur five penalties from the second rider. And as the horse's first foot steps out of the box, time will start. It looks to me as if obstacle one is they are having to walk through um, a series of obstacles. The first little obstacle walk, second obstacle trot, third obstacle walk, and carry on walking through the fourth obstacle to number two. At number two, they will pick up the basket and then they will walk around the marker and return the basket back to the upright. Remember that this is all on time. into the lane right and it's walk through right angled lane with the mat in the second half trot to the bending poles coming round to trot the bending poles now all done through the trot 
If it happens to be that the horse breaks out of pace either into a walk or into, into a canter, this will incur five penalties every time that there is a break of pace. Over obstacle number five, which is trot two jumps. All right. Here you can see that the horse actually cantered over those two over those two jumps, so that will incur five penalties. Second horse is now out of the box. Rider moving on, cutting the corners slightly to save time, and again a pole knocked down, which will incur five penalties. Coming over final jump now and obviously going straight into the box as all four feet into the box time stops now the box lift the box again she wasn't slow enough coming into the box lift the box again incurred five penalties went back into the box again Sorry, 15 penalties by the look of it because we had a break in pace over obstacle number five it was supposed to be trot and it was canter and then we had a knockdown at jump at the second jump and then stepping out of the box. So we have 15 penalties incurred for that class. It looks to be level three high schools. Both girls will go and introduce themselves to the judge and then will then walk again back into the box. And then the first one will then come out and do the working riding part. Right, first one will start her test, come out of the box, time starts as the first foot exits the box. You will notice that this child is not going through her markers, which will be the cones and the flower boxes. So please, everybody that has their test in front of them, read very carefully because you will get penalised for not going through your markers. Right, and we had a break of press in, in obstacle number two, so that there will be five penalties there because it was supposed to be trotter circle and you could clearly see that it broke out of pace into a canter for two or three strides. Walk through the lane and halt for three seconds on the mat. Trot out of the lane and then trot the bending poles. And then trot the little bounce jump. There we go, and then straight back into the box. Four feet in, next one out. There we go, and she needs to get a wiggle on now. Approaching her first jump. Now she's taken a little bit of a wide, long route to come into her first jump. Where, so instead of coming out where she did, she could have come out the opposite end and then straight into her first obstacle. Nice turn into obstacle number eight. cutting corners into our last obstacle and she should be getting her reins a little shorter now slow pony down slow pony down sit up sit up and hold and stop there we go well done girls very well done so apart from the canter at obstacle number two where she should have been trotting very nice round otherwise right what we are going to have here is we are going to show you how to actually save each other if you have if you have a horse that you know that has a problem at a certain obstacle so one of them what they're going to do is they are going to start their working riding and then we're going to pretend that the one is going to have a problem at number three she will try to do number three she will feel no nope, my horse is not going to do number three and then what she will do is she will rush back to the box 
Horses four feet will enter the box before the second competitor will then come out to save her and will then do obstacle number three for her. That competitor will then go back into the, into the box and the first competitor will then complete the working riding round by doing obstacle number four and five and then go back into the box again for the second competitor then to start its working hunt around. Right, first competitor is ready. Walk from, obst uh, from obstacle one to obstacle two, we're going to trot and then walk at obstacle three and then carry on walking through number four and then pick up the basket. Walk around the marker at a walk. Put the basket down. Right, she is now going to attempt obstacle number three. Right, horse not wanting to go into obstacle number three. Right, so now what she does, she knows her horse is not going to do it, so off she goes. Back to the box, moves on, making sure that her horse's four legs are in the box before the next one comes out. Right, now he comes on to do num number three. He's now going to save the first competitor. But she needs to remember that obstacle number three, it is walk through the lane. There we go. Great. Now off she goes. Back to the box again. She's now saved her partner. And the first one will then complete the working riding round. Obstacle number four, which is trot the bending poles. And trot the bounce jump. And back into the lane and then the next one would then start its working hunt around. So that is the way that you can actually save your partner if there seems to be an issue with one of the obstacles. And here we are going to show you how one team member can save the other team member in the working hunter phase. Going to start we've completed the working riding we're now going to start with the working hunter right and the first one will be ready to come out of the box unfortunately a minus five there Oops, and we have a refusal at, at jump number five. And we have another refusal. So she now knows that her pony is not going to jump this, so off she goes back to the box. Remember, you have three attempts at an obstacle. If they fail to complete the obstacle on the third attempt, they are eliminated. The entire team is eliminated. So now the second team member is coming out and she is going to attempt this jump the third time. Right, and she did it, so now she needs to go back to the box in order for the other one to actually then continue with its test. But it looks to me as if she is going to complete the course. So what, what the last competitor did was to complete the working hunt around is, is absolutely fine because it does save time on having to go back to the box and then for the first competitor then to continue doing it.